This is the brand new Canon R10, Canon's newest mirrorless camera in their brand new RF lineup. It's a thousand bucks without a lens or $1,100 with this lens. It has 24 megapixels, 15 frames per second, or 23 with the electronic shutter, 4K video, flip screen, it has everything you need. It's also gonna be a great sports and wildlife camera because of that high frame rate. So we're gonna show you how it does with sports. We're gonna go golfing with Frank and see how it looks. We're gonna do some wildlife shooting and we're also gonna do portraits. But first, we want to thank our sponsor, KEH, for making this video possible. KEH has a huge inventory of used camera gear, and you can buy and sell your gear with them. If you're thinking about getting the new R10, you can sell your old gear and buy the R10, or you can go there and look for budget gear, which we're going to recommend because you don't always need a new camera to get the best results. So go to KEH and use our coupon code to get 5% off or use our other coupon code to get a 5% bonus towards anything that you sell. And that's in the description down below. I wanted KH to sponsor this because getting used lenses and putting them on here is going to make a huge difference. And I'm going to show you that right away with some portraits. Okay, want to give me a little posiness action? Sure. Sit up a little bit. Yeah, there you go. This is so great. If you're coming from a DSLR, it just finds the eye automatically, which means I can recompose however I want without having to move a focusing point or even think about the autofocus at all. Also, I'm farsighted. It's tough for me to see things up close, so I can easily review the photos in the viewfinder without having to put on my glasses. These are some of the good reasons you might want to upgrade from the DSLR world, but there is a pretty major drawback. Right now for Canon RF, for APS-C cameras like this, Canon only has two native lenses and they're both kit lenses, which isn't ideal for portraits. So most of us are going to have to end up adapting something. Fortunately, you can very easily adapt so many different Canon DSLR lenses and KEH has hundreds of them, the best selection in the world. To use Canon DSLR lenses, first get an EF to RF adapter like this one for less than 50 bucks. Now search for Canon EFS lenses. These are optimized for APS-C. You can see KEH has dozens of lenses optimized for APS-C with autofocus for things like super wide angle that you cannot get in native APS-C RF mount right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a, a professional DSLR lens with an adapter. Let me grab that. This is the Canon 24-70 f2.8, an incredibly sharp lens, and I've attached the Viltrox Speed Booster adapter. The Speed Booster has a 0.71 times crop, so that means that this f2.8 lens becomes basically f2. It also makes it wider angle. So you're basically getting full frame results with an APS-C sensor and it has full support for autofocus. So let's take those shots again and see if we can see any difference. At this zoom, you don't see much of a difference, but let's zoom in. Wow, the difference is drastic. The kit zoom is all mushy. You can barely distinguish the eyelashes, but with a good lens, that R10 is capable of taking incredibly sharp pictures. And this is at F8. You would have seen a much bigger difference shooting wide open. The nice thing about shooting portraits is that you don't need the newest and the greatest gear. You can get the Canon 6D for like $445 at KEH and save money and put that towards a lens. You can also get the 5D Mark III for about $600 and you'll have a full frame camera and still have money left over to get a lens. So go to KEH, look at their used selection, and when you save money on your body, you can spend more money on other things like lighting, lenses, and other accessories. But those cameras, aren't great for sports no. which this one is great for so i challenge you to golf it is pouring rain though so we're gonna have to go to a driving range but i'm gonna kick your butt with my mad golf skills and even frank no former golf champion i predict no <laughs> it's on okay let's try let's try it frank's filming with the canon r10 so we can see how it vlogs 
and now you're gonna see how I beat their at golf. That's what, oh, no, it's oh, a it's a goose. <laughs> there we go. Now it's time for our cameraman, Frank, to give it a shot. I've heard he knows a little bit about golf. Oh, shit. Did you hear that? <laughs> what, Frank? Where did it go? Frank! Well, Frank hit one over the fence, so I think it's safe to say that he what won that heck? contest. Okay, this is not right, and it's kind of my fault, but it's kind of the R10's fault, too. See, when you record high-speed video, the R10 does not record any audio, which is a pain for production purposes but it also doesn't really warn you that it's in high speed mode. So I recorded some slow motion golf swings and then I forgot to disable high speed mode. And as a result, this entire piece to camera has no sound. Some of you are saying, don't blame the camera. That's your fault, Tony. Yes, this is human error, but user interface design can reduce the chances of human error. Take a look at how the iPhone handles slow motion. First, the actual mode of the camera is displayed in actual words that make it clear and obvious. The frame rate is displayed at all times, but most importantly, the shutter button actually changes its appearance to make it obvious that I'm not recording normal video. Also, the iPhone records eight times slow motion, not just four times slow motion, and it does record audio. Rant over, here's the vlog piece I spent an hour recovering. Tony, you won. I clearly won, except um, the, the weather today isn't ideal for the type of glove that I brought. What type of glove is that? You know, the golf professional glove. Yeah. Like, I, anyway, the frames per second is pretty amazing, except if you're in the electronic shutter, which gives you 23 frames per second, everything got real warpy. So that is not usable. But I switched to the mechanical shutter, which still gives 15 frames per second. Now, some people think, who would ever need that many frames per second? But as you can see in golf, if you want to get that moment of contact, even 15 frames per second is nowhere near enough. Shooting 120 frames per second video, though, it's only HD, but it does give you many more chances to get that specific shot. But if you are going to be shooting some sports, the R10 for a thousand bucks and 15 frames per second with that mechanical shutter, that's still like the best option you have. I can't think of anything that's as fast at that price point. Uh, Tony, and just to clarify, when, when you go out and play golf next time you go, actually, I heard you go into Augusta where they play the Masters in a month. Oh, yeah. You're supposed to wear your glove on your left hand, not your right hand. So when you show no. up down there and you get on the first tee, bring the other bicycle, bicycle or workout glove down there. <laughs> no, that's his signature right -handed style. right-handed glove, so I don't understand. The signature style. <laughs> not for golf, not for golf. Okay, let's go do some wildlife. <laughs> He's got on the right. <laughs> we got to finish this bucket of even know so that. Battery. All right, I have this in mechanical shutter, but my frame rate is still pretty good. I put on the 600 millimeter F11, and this is a great lens. You're gonna get a lot of reach, especially with the crop sensor. And I'm gonna try to get some shots of birds here with the animal eye detect on to show you how well this does. It's locking right onto the animal's eyes, even when it's small in the frame. It's making it easy to find your subject, recompose around your subject, and get them in focus in your shot. This works really well for a $1,000 camera. I have a little snowy egret bouncing around, so I'm gonna hold down the shutter and try to show you some action just to give you an idea of how many frames 15 frames per second is. And you can hear the buffering. The viewfinder is perfectly acceptable for portraits and probably even sports, but when you're really zoomed out for wildlife, 
the quality of the viewfinder makes it seem like things are out of focus when you're taking shots. I thought that I was getting out of focus shots and then I pull them into my computer and they're fine. It's just that the resolution of the viewfinder is not very high. If you're coming from an optical viewfinder, you're going to notice. If you're coming from another entry level mirrorless camera, you probably won't notice. It's gonna look good to you. One really cool thing about the Canon system is that they have this 600 millimeter F11 that's about $600. And on this camera, and it's gonna get you about 900 millimeters of reach. So you're gonna get a lot of reach when you're taking your wildlife photos. But one drawback to consider is that I put a brand new battery in this and I did about 10 minutes of video, a few portrait shoot shots, a few sports shots, and a few wildlife shots, and the battery is already dead. So the battery life is not very long. You'll have to definitely invest in an extra one. If you put an adapter on this camera, you can use the old SLR lenses on this. And if you go to KEH, they have a huge selection of used lenses at affordable prices. And you can, of course, get the 5% off when you use our discount code down below. So if you're looking to get this body and save a little bit of money with the adapter and some used lenses, or if you already own lenses, then that'll be a bonus for you. So check out KEH. They also have a great 180 day warranty when you shop there and they have a new service which is an extended warranty. Millions of people have purchased Extend Protection for their favorite products. They're on to something. We're excited to share KEH now offers Extend's modern product protection. Pre-owned just got that much better. For more details, check out the links in my description. Plus, 5% off when you shop and 5% off when you sell. So should you buy the Canon EOS R10? If you're a sports and wildlife shooter, yeah, you should buy it. It is so fantastic at that for a thousand dollar price point it's great but the 18 to 45 lens you'd get in the kit is awful for both sports and wildlife so you'll want to upgrade the lens for wildlife i would recommend the canon 600 millimeter f11 or pick up an ef to rf adapter that will allow you to use the canon ef dslr lenses and go shopping on keh for one of the many 150 to 600 lenses. There are lenses from Tamron and Sigma that were built for Canon DSLRs that will work great on this. You might also check out the Canon 400 millimeter F 5.6 Prime. If you're a sports shooter, you could upgrade to the Canon 18 to 150 kit lens. That's definitely a better lens. It's good enough for outdoor sports, baseball, field sports like soccer, but for indoor sports, it's going to be kind of slow and your money would be better spent getting something like a 70 to 200 F to eight lens. I would pick up the EF to RF adapter and get a used Tamron Sigma or Canon 70 to 200 F to eight. And that will give you fantastic results with all the benefits of a mirrorless camera. Now, what if you're not a sports or wildlife shooter? What if you want general photography, travel, portraits, that kind of thing? I probably wouldn't recommend the Canon EOS R10 to you, mostly because Canon has an amazing competitor at the same price point, $1,000, and that's the Canon EOS RP. And in fact, it's $1,000 new, but you can go to KEH and get it for even less. And this one has a full frame sensor more than twice as big as the Canon EOS R10, and that gives you more nice background blur, cleaner pictures in low light, and full access to all of Canon's full frame lenses without needing to use a speed booster or having any kind of serious crop. I would highly recommend making one of your first upgrades a better quality lens. I've thoroughly tested both of the kit lenses for the R10 and neither one of them is particularly sharp. And they're your only options that are optimized for APS-C but you could get that Viltrox speed booster and then pick up one of the Canon DSLR lenses. I would love to see you in a Tamron or Sigma or Canon 24 to 70 F2.8 for the Canon EF mount. With that Viltrox speed booster, those give you good general purpose focal ranges, fast low light performance and great autofocus. If you want super wide, which you probably will for things like travel, you could use the standard EF to RF adapter with no optics and then pick up one of the Canon EF-S wide angle lenses like the 10 to 18. There are options from Tamron and other third parties that will get you super wide angle results with an APS-C sensor like this. And a tip when you're shopping at KEH and you find something you like, don't leave it in your 
shopping cart and sleep on it overnight to make up your mind about it because when you wake up in the morning, it's probably gonna be gone. I've had that happen to me many times. So go ahead and check out right away. You have a 14 day return period if you change your mind. You have a 180 day warranty if anything breaks. So you don't have those worries that you do from buying used from some other outlet. And of course you have that extend warranty that can take you even longer, giving you even more assurance that this gear is going to be working great. So thank you to our sponsor, KEH. You can find all the links for the gear I've mentioned down in the description. And in the comments, ask me any questions you might have about the R10, I'm happy to answer. And be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications because I have a free one hour long tutorial coming for the R10 soon in the next month or so. Thank you, bye.